It's here, it's here, it's here. I just want to thank today's video sponsor, Theobalk. Theobalk has reached out to me. They wanted me to try out this new Stay Cool line. They say that Stay Cool is the best comfortable t-shirt that I'll ever own. And one of the things with Stay Cool is that they say that it actually has a wicking technology that allows you to stay cooler than a reg regular shirt would. It does better than other shirts at keeping you cool. It deodorizes, it's antimicrobial, it moves We it has four-way stretch, and they said that this right here will blow me away. I said, well, you've never been to Florida before, have you? It gets hot, and they said, give us a try. So I, I love a challenge. So what we have here is the Dodger Blue, the Sage, Tuscany, and then the mint on the end. Now the Tuscany and mint, they, uh, they're going to be the long sleeve shirts, I believe. Uh, they, they were having an issue trying to get the long sleeve. They were running a little short. So I told myself, if you can't get long sleeve, send me a short sleeve. That's fine. But I did want some long sleeves because if these are this good, I would like to use them like sun shirts almost. But like I said, they, uh, they talk about this new fabric that they're using. It's a blend that they call the PBS Blast fabric. So PBS stands for Pima Cotton, Bamboo, and Serrana. Now, a few years ago, I was looking at some bamboo shirts, and they was running about $100 or more a piece, and all the golfers and everybody was talking about how cooler it was than a regular shirt. Pima is a uh, another sustainable ingredient but serrana it's known for giving you spandex like movability without the uh all the the different fabric uh components that make it not sustainable so uh, everything here in the pbs line of uh, fabric is sustainably sourced it is a sustainable product and that's something that they really believe in with Fiobalk is sustainability, but they also want you to have something that is velvet, velvetly smooth. So this right here, I've already felt the fabric here. Man, it has a sheen to it almost uh, like spandex. If you remember spandex, it, it used to be this really comfortable stretchy material, uh, but it, it feels, you get that cotton feel, but then you got that stretch. It really does feel really good just touching the fabric. And so one of the things with this line and what I'm really proud of working with Fiabuck on this. And again, we're going to try it out. So all these claims that they're making, I'm going to try them out. I'm going to be rough on them. But one of the things that impressed me the most is their diversity of their line. For somebody that deals just in t-shirts and long sleeve shirts and things of that nature, they come in a variety of styles. They run from small to 5XL. So if you're a big guy, that's huge. And also for these, uh, you know, smaller framed men, you know, I know y'all get, y'all get ignored just like the big guys do. And so they got everybody covered. So if you're, if you're a small, they got you covered. If you're 5XL, they got you covered. They come everywhere from standard to slim to extra long to classic. And then you got crew neck, v-neck, polo, and Henley collars. I like the Henleys myself, um, but for what I do out, you know, on these videos, a crew neck works for me. So all these are in crew neck here. They have over 22 different colors, and I just thought these would be the best, coolest, nicest looking uh, colors that for this area where I live. I like the fact that it's wrinkle free. I like the fact that it's moisture wicking. I'm really interested in the deodorizing and antimicrobial uh, aspects of it and the four way stretch. But what I really love is the fact that they say that no matter what, that 
it will uh, not deform, shrink, or lose color from long washing cycles. And if you look over here, it tells you right here how you're supposed to wash it. You're just supposed to use cold water, don't use any bleach, tumble dry on a low setting. That's all you're supposed to do. So that's their washing instructions on the collar. They say that, you know, just kind of wash your color separately. And they, they suggest not soaking for a long time. So just don't leave them on a long time to soak. But we're going to test out how they do in the wash. And if you'd like to order some Fearbox shirts for your own after this video, you can do so. And they've given my viewers an exclusive promo code. So down in the description below, you can go to their website and enter KEN20 to get 20% off. So this is what I normally wear. This right here is just a normal fishing shirt. So you can see in the back here that has little vents. And what normally happens with these types of shirts, they hold in sweat for a long period of time. And then when wind comes in, it, it picks up the wind and it kind of flows around me. And that tends to work out because if you wear a t-shirt, what happens in Florida normally is that we have such high humidity that the moisture, once it wicks up, it does not evaporate. So now let's look at how these shirts fit on me and what they look like. All right, so this right here is the Dodger. Right off the bat, man, it feels like I'm hardly wearing a shirt at all. Again, stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. This thing moves with me. And the reason why I don't like tight fitting shirts is that they, they bind. And this is not binding. So I'm really liking it. It barely feels as if I got a shirt on at all. All right, this is the Sage. You got to understand, I have a really long torso. I am six foot two. And yet right here, they come actually, and my, my pants, because I'm fat, my pants always sag down some. So, I mean, old man issues, but these right here, it comes down perfectly fine. This is another issue that I find in other brands that they make them where they come up like here on me. Even without the extra long, they fit. All right, this right here is the mint. And this is in the long sleeve shirt. Now, one of the things I have an issue with as a big and tall dude is that the long, the, the long sleeves, they normally don't go and fit right. These right here go all the way down to my wrist like they're supposed to. I can do this. It's not binding anywhere on me, which is unique because with us big guys, you know how it is we always have even if you do it and you do like this it'll try to pull up here on you with most other shirts i'm not getting that with this shirt here feels comfortable i could see me fishing this shirt especially if bugs are bad this right here is the tuscan color tuscany so again super comfortable I wear this every day I take this out in the summertime it'll be nice and cool because you have those light colors reflecting the Sun not absorbing the heat and also be great in the fall or any other time of year because you know it's always hot here in summer I think we have what two weeks of winter so yeah loving this right here and even in summer heat right now it's like a hundred and something degree heat index not that hot I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty cool even in a long sleeve shirt so i was just working on the uh hand crank the winch for the boat system this is 30 minutes of being out in the sun here it's 109 degrees real feel so and this is getting towards the evening so this is what I'm used to having. 
this is what I'm used to dealing with but I will say as the wind blows it does kind of cool off now you're not going to get the cooling the full cooling potential that you would normally get somewhere else I understand this is Florida I don't care what type of technology somebody has it's going to be hard pressed when you got the humidity levels that we have to get moisture to evaporate unless you're in an air conditioner or you go in full blast in a boat or truck and you're on the back of the truck there's no other way it just doesn't do that so at this point in time we're going to try it out a little bit more i got to work on this uh, light post here there's an issue with lighting there and we're just doing some just general everyday mechanic stuff that you know home repairs things where you're outside just to get an idea of what it's like you know in my conditions my area of the state now your state would be different naturally so if you don't live in the south maybe you live in the mountains all right uh, you get you have warm summers there uh, and evaporation reacts differently than it does in Florida because we're a tropical to subtropical climate uh, that has a high humidity and that does impact how heat feels on you and also how you get evaporation like all this sweat it just builds on my arms it very little of it evaporates but there's spots on this shirt that's been evaporating and I do get some coolness from the shirt so the the shirt feels a few degrees cooler than what my arms do and what the surrounding air does so that's kind of neat it's a it's a little odd and I guess what's doing is it's spreading that uh, that sweat out so as I perspire it spreads it out and allows for more space I don't know the science behind it I don't know how it's supposed to work that part um, I, I haven't been able to understand fully uh, maybe Theobalk would be nice enough to put that on the website to explain how it works but man I mean there's spots here that are gone that were full of sweat and like I said it's feeling cooler than if I had another shirt on. It feels cooler than if I had a t-shirt on, definitely, because right now, if I was in a t-shirt, it'd be soaked, it'd be wet, soaking wet. This looks about what my fishing shirt would look like, but I'm getting all the, the, uh, the evaporation. You can, I can actually see different drops as they evaporate out there's different changes in the color as it evaporates out so that's kind of neat so just a little bit of air causes this evaporation I'm, I'm assuming don't know but i'm assuming what's doing is spreading that perspiration out and then it's allowing it dry out but this is supposed to have an antimicrobial uh deodorizing aspect to it so even though i'm perspiring like crazy at the end i shouldn't have a smelly shirt like i do normally when i'm outside working i shouldn't smell really bad from all this sweating and perspiring because if you had a t-shirt on by now you'd smell about half rotten and i'm not noticing any smells right off the bat i'll check my wife i know she'll love that she'll give it sniff test and let me know but everything is seeming to do as advertised which is pretty cool especially in today's environment so let's keep on keeping on well it's been a good hour i would say that i've been outside working on the boat you can see different levels of perspiration on my shirt but a lot of the perspiration has already evaporated with this wind that we got a little bit going on right here the shirt is noticeably cooler than what the outside area is on my skin and i noticed that sweat on my skin isn't seeming to evaporate whereas this i'm actually noticing because i have a colored shirt it evaporating so it's doing as advertised we are out on the water. Gonna try to do a little bit of fishing and see what we get. Be, be with you in a second. Whew, man, you can tell it's hot. Good grief. 
I've got my rods out right now and sun's going down told the wife I'd be headed out and headed to the boat ramp by 10 o'clock so we're gonna stay here a little bit see what happens I've only got just a couple hours and I've got to head home but trying to make the most out of things Number 11, Stephen Davis. Well, I'm at the ball game watching my nephews, and this shirt right here is doing fine. I am cool, man. Okay, so guys, um, I've got some errands to run. Temperatures are finally cooling off. It's only a 98 degree real field. Yesterday, I had thought about doing this. Um, this is the long sleeve shirt here. It's pulling a little bit up on the wrist. Uh, so that's something I need to remember uh, in the final review. But it, uh, it was 109 degrees yesterday, real feel. And I was taking my mother out to do her uh, kind of biannual shopping, get all the big items that she needs. We load up the truck, uh, do that kind of thing. And I, she doesn't like being on camera. I understand that. And so I decided, you know what, I'll just hold off today. I've got to do some errands. I've got to get this haircut or either get a dog tag one. Um, I've got some mediations I'll be doing pretty soon, so I got to look halfway presentable. Uh, I've been doing my Swamp Man Sasquatch stuff, you know, going out fishing, things of that nature. Got some good content coming up soon, but it's time for me to get back to work and I need to look like a professional. So I'm going to go get my haircut, get a few items for uh, our supper night, uh, frying up some fish from a recent fishing trip. You'll eventually see that. And uh, I'm gonna just tell you how this shirt does in this nice, cool, 98 degree real fill temperature. Stay tuned. Well, I guess you can say we have 100% humidity in Florida right now. I had my hair cut. Uh, Sue Tai, uh, she did my hair cut. So if you haven't been to her channel, go check her out. She, uh, she's a wonderful lady. She's from Thailand. She lives here in America. She cuts hair. She cooks. She does a lot of stuff. She's a content creator on Facebook. And now she's getting started on YouTube. Show her some love. That would really be appreciated by her, I'm sure. So I got my hair cut. Uh, it's starting to rain. I've got to do some more errands. So we're going to kind of run around town. I won't show you everything here, but... I'm feeling cool, even though it's a long sleeve shirt. Now, when, when I ain't, you know, sitting around whatever this shirt does come to my wrist, I do wish it was just a little bit longer and a little bit wider. Uh, but other than that, feels pretty good. Well, the rain has been relentless, but it's just a sprinkle all day long, which is kind of nice. Um, it's cooling things off. We've been needing water. My goodness, have we been needing water. Plants are shriveling up. You can put water on them, and in this sandy soil, not even next day, they're already shriveled up, acting like they hadn't had water in weeks. So, but what I think is so neat, you can almost watch the uh, water drying off of me. Look at this. So this is hard to see that right there, but that right there was just a few seconds old, and it's already dried up. This is not normal for Florida. In Florida, you know, you get wet, you stay wet. Unless you get in some indoor air conditioning or you got really good uh, air in your car and it's blowing hard, you're not going to get this evaporation happening. So it's kind of nice. I mean, even in the rain, my shirt's trying to dry itself out super fast, which I am loving. Now, again, this is only a small amount of water. I get it. But compared to what I'm used to, 
it is different. It is kind of odd. It's a little strange. Uh, at least for me, because we have such a high humidity, it's hard to explain it. If you're not from the deep south and you're used to high humidity, especially Florida deep south, because Florida deep south is a special kind of heat. It's a special type of humidity. And then the wintertime, same thing. That humidity causes us to be ultra cold. So you can have, you know, 40, 50 degree temperatures and the wind, what we call wind chill, will actually cause it to get down below freezing. And so you actually will have ice forming in 40 and 50 degree weather due to wind chill. That is a thing. It's cause of the humidity. So something to think about that this, how this shirt reacts, I think it's odd. It's, it's neat. It's, it's something I'm not used to seeing, but I, I really do like that. All right, so we're in my washroom. We're about to wash this blue shirt here. Uh, so it got pretty sweaty. It smells just like a new shirt. And that's what my wife was telling me. She said it smells just like a new shirt. Now, I don't know if you are used to diabetics or you're diabetic or whatever, but after you become diabetic, there is a certain smell to your sweat that just stinks. Especially when you get on medication for diabetes, and I'm diabetic. My shirts, everything reeks. I can't stand it. I would think this was a new shirt if I didn't know better. So what we're going to do is put this into the washer and see how it does. And it goes into the washer. Oops, I threw in a white sock. I wonder what the shirt's going to do to the white sock. Let's find out. And goes in my homemade laundry detergent. I'll put a link in here in the description below so you can see how to make it. All right, so the instructions say that you're supposed to do uh, cold water only. All right, now my wife, she does the laundry. All clothes go in at the same temperature. All the colors go in together. So if it bleeds, if it, if it can't take a little hot water or whatever, we're going to find out exactly. So this is her settings. This is the normal settings that she uses. It'll take an hour to wash. It goes on a normal soil level, a high spin level, and an eco-warm level. So we're going to see how this one works. Be back an hour. Alright, so this has got the auto sensor going on right now. My dryer, the blue is in the, the dryer right now. It uses normal dry. We don't have any cold dry, but it's a tumble dry. i got about 15, 14, 15 minutes left on it. And then we're going to do the next one. This one going into the washer. And another white sock. Here we go. Now I was sweating like a stuck hog when I wore this shirt last. Smells like a new shirt. I can't believe that. I've never had a shirt that where I was just sweating profusely like I was that night. And nothing. Smells great. Let's put her in the wash, see what happens. Just like the rest of them, it's going in with a white sock. And we got the other one in there with socks. Turn this one on. And we're going to put this on the normal setting that Tasha has. Everything's right. Go there. Last one going into the wash. Tell you what, just looking at these socks, and I know which one was washed with which shirt. But looking at it, if I didn't know exactly which one was with which, 
I'd say that they's all wash whites. That they um, there's no difference in them. There is visually no change in color, no bleed, no nothing. Even the reddish colored one, um, the Tuscan style colored one, that did not bleed. Which normally red's gonna bleed if it re if anything is gonna bleed. So that. I think is a win. So when I was approached by Fubok to uh, do a review of this product, I really thought they had lost their minds. You see, Florida is not exactly the best spot in the world to be testing a product of this kind. The high humidity that we have pretty much makes it, well I wouldn't say unusable, it works, but where it won't work as effectively as it should. Uh, so what happens is that uh, we have such high humidity that it causes the, uh, the evaporation rate to change and it causes the amount of heat that we experience to change. And so that means that you sweat more and you don't uh, evaporate off that sweat as fast. And so I thought that it was kind of strange that a company be wanting to put their product through the test in a state in an area like ours which is the worst possible area to test this product but yet they've still said to bring it on they wanted an honest review so they sent the shirts and i did i did just that i ran these things through the paces i've got some notes here uh some if you see me looking down i it's this is kind of, I wanted to make sure my thoughts were organized. Uh, first, let's go, go over the pros. So, what I am wearing and what I've been testing this whole video is what they call the Stay Cool 2.0. And this line of shirts is built to last, man. I mean it. They are built to last. And they come in a dizzying array of sizes and colors and all different neck collars and sleeves, no sleeves, you name it. Uh, so for instance, you can get standard slim and then extra long. Uh, you got 22 or actually over 22 different colors as of right now that you can do. You got uh, Henleys, uh, crew necks, which is what I got, polo, v-neck, like I said, you can just get about anything you want. Now, the design of the fabric is unique, and I'm going to talk a lot about the fabric, and that's the reason why I wanted to do the notes, because I had to do some research on this stuff, because, you know, they mention these names, but if you're not used to them, they really don't mean much. Uh, so the fabric has got what they call a four-way stretch. That means that no, no matter which way that you pull it and tug it, it, it just moves and uh, you can do it multiple times and it won't deform. It always comes back to true. So this shirt has been washed and used a few times already and it looks practically new on me. So when I talk about some stuff in the con section, I want you to think right now about this. This shirt looks and feels new after multiple washings and usings. So even my critiques that I'm doing are so minuscule that the average person wouldn't even notice it. But with that, um, 
another thing about these shirts, as you'll notice, uh, they don't lose color. They don't lose color at all. And they don't also, they don't bleed out onto your other fabrics, which is a problem for a lot of clothing that you get, a, a, you know, especially your red colors and orange colors. Uh, and also some of your darker colors, you know, your blues, your blacks, your purples, they'll bleed out. That, that doesn't happen with Fibok. It, it just doesn't. They don't bleed out. You saw the test. I, you know, I tried to make them bleed. They wouldn't bleed. So that's, and I'll get into why in just a second on that. They're wrinkle resistant. So I did not iron this shirt before doing the video. I actually had it folded up and in my drawer, like I have all my other shirts and all my other shirts, you look at my other videos, they're all wrinkled. This right here, not wrinkled. Uh, this is also not ironed. So you can do some light ironing with it. So if you was going to, you know, wear a certain shirt out on a date, uh, you were going to use it for maybe an undershirt, you got a white one, you want a nice comfortable undershirt uh, because you're going to be wearing a suit and tie or whatever and you wanted something better than one of those cheap old Walmart, you know, garbage undershirts. You know, you wanted something nice, you could definitely iron it and make sure that your, your uh, dress shirt isn't messed up. But, in most cases, I probably wear just this to an event uh, nowadays that we have what they call dress casual or business casual. Uh, I, I, I really think that these shirts get you a polo, get you a Henley. Uh, that'd be no problem. Even with a crew neck, if you had a blazer or something, other, you had to walk in for a meeting, I'd have no problem putting a blazer on and that'd be my... My, my outfit, uh, especially if I was doing like a mediation. Yeah, because I mean, that's my real job as mediator. So I mean, sure, it makes you approachable. It's cool, it's relaxing, yet it looks better than a regular t-shirt, a hundred times better. Uh, the camera doesn't do it justice. There's a sheen to it, there is a look to it, there is a polish, a crispness to it but it feels buttery smooth and it is so freaking cool. Now outside, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you know, you're know you in an inside environment, you know, let's say you burn up all day long, you got you know good airflow from air conditioning, which in Florida that is a must, you have to have air conditioning. Uh, I stay cool all day long with these, whereas uh, when I was putting on my my favorite fishing shirt the other day, the one that I say is always cooler than the rest of my shirts. I was like, why is it so hot? It's because I've been wearing these. Uh, they do facilitate evaporation. I want to mention that and what moisture wicking uh, to make it cooler. So even outside, you do feel it. But I think that if I was someplace other than Florida, someplace other than a Gulf Coast state. Those, that, that mechanism for cooling you off would be more pronounced, I feel. Uh, I've been to other states outside the Gulf Coast states, even though I'm a lifelong resident of Florida, I'm a seventh generation resident of Florida, seventh generation, generation resident in my county and my city. So I've got deep roots here in Florida. I'm more of a unicorn than anything else, but I've been to other places and first thing I always notice is the lack of humidity and how water evaporates and I'm cooler and I feel more comfortable, whereas in Florida you just don't feel that. You, you're miserable all the time. So that is something to, uh, to note there that does do the evaporation moisture wicking as advertised. I've been, you know, sweating in this shirt. I I mentioned it before, I'm diabetic. 
uh, if if you're diabetic, you know. If you're if you're not diabetic, you probably don't know. But when you start getting on that medicine, there's a certain smell to the diabetes uh, that you know when you when you're taking these medications. There's a certain funk that you just have that you can't do anything about. And after sweating all day and you know, 109 degree real fill temps out, you know, with this shirt. And there's like, there wasn't any smell. It smelled like a new shirt when I put it in the laundry. Even my wife, she smelled it. She said, that smells like a new shirt. And I had some of these that I just left to wash them. And I, I told her, I said, don't, I'll get to them later. I'll get to them later. Don't wash these. I'll get to them later. I'm doing an experiment. I'm doing an experiment. And I tell you what, when, when I washed them, I, I did a smell t test and you saw it. It was like, man, no, no smell. It smelled like a brand new shirt. And every time I, I wear these and then I, I go to wash them, I always take a, uh, a sniff and they always smell new so that's kind of neat I know it's something you don't really want to talk about that it grows factor but you you if you're especially if you've been sweating or whatever and you're around people you you're always kind of self-conscious about certain things I don't have to feel self-conscious in these shirts because I know they're always gonna smell new uh, that's something I, I just love I think that's amazing um, now let's get into the fabrics. So I am not one of these people that, oh, I, it has to be sustainably sourced. It has to be environmentally friendly. Friendly. It has to be all that stuff. I'm not that kind of guy. Uh, now there's some things I don't agree with or I don't go with, but all in all, I am just cause something is you know, environmentally friendly or sustainably sourced doesn't mean that it's a buying feature for me. Now, it may be a buying feature for you. But if the sustainability and the, the renewable resources used, if they add a benefit that is as good or above and beyond using petroleum, that's a different matter. That gets my interest. And that's where this PBS fabric really does uh, get my attention. In fact, I did some deep dives into what this PBS fabric is. So PBS fa fabric, I mentioned it earlier. It is a blend. Now they've got a formulation that they use at field bulk and they don't tell you what those breakdowns are and I understand why they have to protect their resource that is a resource for them but it is a what they consider to be a golden ratio of Pima cotton that's the P bamboo that's the B and Serana that's the S now let's talk about Pima Pima gets its name from a tribe of Native Americans in Arizona that worked with the USDA to help revive a 6,500 year old strain of cotton. And this cotton is different than other cottons. Uh, so what we consider to be common cotton, just like in Florida, we grow cotton left and right here. And I'm used to the smell of cotton. Yes, cotton has a smell. So if you open up so, you know, like some of these laundry detergents or fabric scents or anything that says clean cotton, that smell, that is the smell of real cotton flowers. That is what cotton smells like. It's amazing. It smells wonderful. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. And so these cotton plants, what we, what we grow and use all the time, cotton balls, cotton swabs, all that is even the t-shirts we wear is what's known as upland cotton. And it is roughly about 93% of the market, all right? And so it is called Gossipium hirsutum. Yeah, that's a lot, good one. 
Uh, sometimes the industry will call it staple cotton. Well, what's the other 7%? And why is it even around since we have so much of this other cotton? Well, that is a different type. It is called extra long staple or ELS in the industry. Wow, that's appealing, ain't it? <laughs> it's Gossipium Barbadense. Yeah, I love these Latin names. And there's basically what they have is four groups. And if you talk to the experts, they say that there is very minimal, if any, difference between the four categories. is mostly about the strains of the cotton and where they're grown. But basically, all ELS cotton, especially Pima, is, um, is broke down into these four categories. So you got Egyptian, you got Pima, you got Sea Island, and then the other, which I always, I love that. You would think they'd have a name for the other that was just as attractive as Pima Egyptian, because everybody knows Egyptian. Uh, Pima is gaining traction. Sea Island, you know, that, unless you're really into stuff, most people probably wouldn't know what that is. But then you got other, you know, really? Y'all should have some type of name for that, but they don't. I uh, guess they don't have great marketing. But either way, they, these, these types or categories have branding associated with them. And like I said, they're almost all identical. Pima is softer than regular upland cotton. And there's a thing called pilling. So if you had never heard of pilling, imagine what it takes in the process of making fabric. You got your threads and then you're weaving them together with these machines. Well, these upland cottons have shorter fibers. And so these little needles and, and hooks and things are rubbing against these fibers and causing those little bee strands to be damaged and frayed and coming out. Well, after you wash them a few times in that weave, that all those loose threads will form a head or peel up. And that's what they call pilling. So if you've ever put on a cotton t-shirt and it feels scratchy. I've got one right now that I put on and every time first thing I go, ooh, this is scratchy. That's pilling. It's 100% cotton. It's going to feel scratchy after a while because of the pilling. Well, Pima cotton, it doesn't do that. It's a longer strand and we're going to talk about some of the other attributes of it, but it doesn't pill up. And that means that you get a buttery smooth feel every single time you wear it. Then uh, another thing is that it doesn't wrinkle. So it doesn't behave like the cotton fibers from Upland Cotton. It, it behaves totally different. So you don't get the wrinkling. And even though it's softer, because it is longer, it has a trait of being 30% stronger than the upland cotton at the very beginning. So what does that 30% stronger mean to me as a consumer? Why do I care if it's 30% stronger before it's even made to a fabric? It's just the thread or fiber actually. Well, that means that it's going to last longer over time. So over the length of time from the time that it's made to the time that it has satisfied your needs and is no, no longer considered useful, that fabric has exponentially outlived normal upland cotton blends and normal upland cotton and their life expectancies. So it means that you, when you get a shirt with Pima cotton in it, it's going to outlive other shirts made with regular cotton. So that's something that I find to be important to know as a consumer that, okay, if I spend a little bit more because it's got 
a, a ELS cotton Pima Egyptian Sea Island or any other long fiber cotton, then that means that I'm going to get stretchy, soft, durable cotton that will last longer than if I get just a regular, you know, brick and mortar chain store shirt off the rack. So that's important to note that as a consumer, yes, I'm going to pay a little bit more up front, but over the life of the product, I'm, I'm actually going to come out ahead financially. And that's just my business mindset. I'm sorry, I, I get kind of geek out in some of this. The other thing is that it's extremely color fast. Now, what does that mean? It means it takes color very easily. And that means that they don't have to use harsh dyes. And there's not only does that do problems with the environment, but that also does problems with your fabric's longevity. So not only are you, with an upland cotton, are you getting a fabric that is inferior to Pima, but also then they have to dye it a certain color because it comes white after it's bleached it's white so you know they got white and then if you want another color if it's upland they have to use something that's harsh and that means that's destroying those fibers versus Pima means that they use something that doesn't destroy it which means it keeps its longevity even longer which only adds more value at the end. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of people that understand these fabrics are going to Egyptian, Pima, Sea Island, or any of the other out there that are ELS fabrics. Um, and then uh, it'll hold the, the color longer. So that's the other thing, you know, how many times have you washed a shirt a few times and it just looks old and faded? You're like, I just spent a fortune on your this, these clothes and they look old and faded. I got cotton. Yeah, you got cotton. They're going to be old and faded. Pima cotton, different story. It's a different critter. <laughs> just to speak Southern to y'all. It's a different critter. It's a different thing. And so you have to see it. It's not all cotton is the same. And there is a distinct difference. And... Fiobok has took the time to understand this in their formulation to get the best possible blend together. And that meant getting the best possible cotton for the job. Uh, so not only does it mean that it won't fade, but the other thing is how many times have you washed clothes and then you're like, oh crud, I left a red shirt, brand new red shirt, and now I got pink and purple and all these weird colored other clothes that messed up my entire laundry and I can't get it out. All right, that's cause Upland Cotton doesn't want to hold on to dyes very well. Pima does, and they're using less harsh dyes. Less harsh dyes mean that your other clothing that has to have harsh dyes, they won't be affected. If it did bleed out, it wouldn't be affected. And because of traits of Pima, Pima's going to hold on to it anyway, so it's not going to bleed out. But in the off chance that something did bleed out, it wouldn't impact your other clothes. So again, there's this business side to things and this, this science and biology of this, this fabric that is, I went way too deep of a dive into these fabrics. But let's look at the next one. I'm going to get off Pima for a moment and go on to bamboo. So I remember, good grief, it had been 15 years ago maybe. I, I don't know exactly how long ago it's been. It's been for a while. And they wanted easily $100 for a polo shirt that was bamboo. And they, they were making claims that I'm talking about today. Why, why is the shirt not going to have a smell? That, you know, all, as American back in the early 20s, 
you know, early 2000s, not the early 20s probably, is or probably early 2000s, mid 2000s. It's got to be longer than 15 years ago. I'm getting old. Man, getting old sucks. But, you know, you think early 2000s, mid 2000s, you had this shirt that didn't smell. Uh, it was naturally UV resistant. It wicked moisture and kept you cool and helped with the whole perspiration evaporation process. Did all these things, had all these claims, but it, back then you think about $100 for a shirt, and it was a polo. $100 for a polo shirt, and you're like, my God, who can afford it, you know? It's not the, the the buying power of the dollar hadn't been as diminished as it is now. And so, you know, you it, it was just a probably in today's terms, you'd be looking at $250, $300 for that same shirt if we was using today's money to put it in perspective for you. So this bamboo shirt, I've always had bamboo in my mind, but you never saw anybody until recently using bamboo. Uh, you see it a lot in threads and cords and things of that nature, but you're just now getting to see it a lot in the fabric market where, where t-shirt designers, sock manufacturers, all these different people are using bamboo, and Fiabalk is one of them. And the reason why is one, bamboo is highly durable, extremely durable. It when you compare it to cotton, it has far more stretch than cotton. Now again, we're talking upland cotton. So you take Pima cotton, which has stretch, and then you way more stretch than regular upland cotton. And then you add bamboo, now you got a really stretchy fabric, okay? Then you got something that is extremely soft. Bamboo has been likened to silk, if you can believe that, you know, you think bamboo, we're talking about the same thing, right? It's the, it's the thing that's technically a grass, but it looks like a tree or a bush and grows super fast and it's hard and durable. I use cane poles, that's bamboo, and I use it for fishing. If you've seen my fishing videos, I've used cane poles and you're telling me that this stick is going to produce a fabric that is similar to silk, but yet it does. It, it is, it, so again, soft, smooth, buttery smooth, super soft. Well, you got Pima, which is smooth and soft. You add bamboo to it. Now you got something smooth and soft and wicks. You know, it's, it's special. It, it actually helps make the fabric highly absorbent and breathable at the same time because if you cut the threads, there's actually holes and it's actually carrying air and moisture. So there is this, this process that it is doing that is intrinsic to the fabric itself, which I find to be so fascinating because I am a science geek and I just love this stuff. And they, they have a term, bamboo coon, K-U-N, and it basically it's this property of bamboo that's antibacterial and it's deodorizing. And that right there, that's the reason why they're doing socks with it, folks. You know, how many times have you had stinky socks? Well, you get you some bamboo ones and you don't have that problem. Plus, they feel a lot better, feel a hundred times better, okay? Same thing here with your shirt. You know, you don't want to have any type of smell. You don't want to have any type of odor from perspiration. You're not going to get it. One of the other things, bamboo is naturally UV resistant. So that means that, especially with stuff like I do. I do a lot of outdoor stuff with this channel. I can put a long sleeve shirt on and it's actually going to do the same thing as a sun shirt 
that I would have to pay. Well, I, I looked at one of them the other day in the store. It's made up of some spandex and other materials, so it's going to be hot. And I think they wanted like 60 or 80 dollars for that shirt. I'm like, I just, I don't want, no. I could put on a long sleeve shirt and put on a hat or something that would cover my head. As long as it was field book, I would have UV protection because of the bamboo. I could use it as a sun shirt. Now they don't advertise this. This is just me looking at the research, looking at bamboo and what the industry says. And they say that you can actually say that it's UV resistant if it's made with bamboo. So I'm going what the industry says. This is not what Fieldbox said. This is my own research. Then, of course, you got a fabric that is lightweight. Again, I don't know if you've ever worn silk. Silk has fallen out of fashion. I used to have a silk shirt. It was my favorite shirt ever. I about cried when it got destroyed. It is, silk is a luxurious fabric that many other fabrics try to emulate and they all fail. And yet bamboo is repeatedly compared to silk. It is lightweight, it is durable, it is strong. It, it deodorizes, it does all these things that either silk does or silk can't do and bamboo does better than silk. And so many ways, one, one of the ways that bamboo is edging out the rest of the competition is by tapping into those markets that used to be dominated by silk. Because if you want a lightweight product, and you want to be stretchy and smooth and feel comfortable and yet look crisp, bamboo's the way to go. So they added Pima with bamboo and they got this ratio going. But then they added another fabric, um, another type of material to their fabric, Serrana. I was like, all right, one's cotton, one's bamboo. I get that, but what is Serrana? Well, that is something that DuPont came out with. DuPont's a chemical company. And there, you think of polyester, you think of all these spandex, all these different chemicals that we make, it's all our crude oil. Well, DuPont found a way to use glucose and bacteria to produce products that were similar but actually did better and they were sustainable. So, Serrana, it is highly sustainable. You don't have to worry about crude oil and crude oil prices and all that impacting all these other, you know, we, we just think about the gas pump, but it's not just the gas pump. Paints, food items, uh, food items for humans, and food items for livestock. Uh, you got all kind of chemicals uh, pigments, you got uh, varnishes, clothing, all, textiles, all these different things that they make out of crude oil. And so anytime that we can take something out of the crude oil equation, then that means we don't have to be as dependent upon petroleum. And when something happens, let's say that there's a big issue, because right now Iran there's a lot of stuff going on with Iran right now. And if, even if you look at the global scale, yeah, it's all pointing back to Iran. Well, if something ever broke out with crude oil, we wouldn't be as impacted. You wouldn't see that impact in the, the, the areas where you need certain fabrics and certain, certain components of fabrics because now DuPont has Serrana. And so, it, it is all natural. It is super supple. That is one of the traits that everybody loves about it is that supple. Yet it's stretchy. Again, Pima, Bamboo, both of them. Supple, stretchy. Now you add Serrana in. Supple, stretchy. Are you seeing this synergistic 
thing going on here using these three in a special formulation all right that's what that's what few bulk has been doing all right and the more I investigated this the more I was like really appreciating the work that they put into it because it feels soft supple all that stuff stretchy it's naturally stain resistant which I love because first thing I ever do when I get a shirt is put a stain on it I don't mean to it's not deliberate it's just the fact I'm gonna do it and yet I don't have a stain one on this shirt uh, and then of course you don't have to worry about petroleum uh, but the thing about it is you get the benefits of polyester uh, acrylic and nylon so that's really important there that you get those benefits of it but you don't you don't have to worry about crude oil and also it's not as hot so even though you get the benefits it doesn't behave the same way as the petroleum stuff so you know think petroleum think plastic do you want to wear a plastic bag in 109 real field temperatures? No. All right. Then you think about something like, you know, cotton. Would you rather have a plastic bag you're wearing in these heats or do you want to wear cotton? Okay. That's a no brainer. I'd rather wear cotton than a plastic bag. So that's the reason why Serrano is really taken over in the marketplace instead of these polyesters and things of that nature for these higher end clothes because you don't get that plastic feeling you don't get that plastic sensation that when you're out in the heat that you're just dying you know it's just holding the heat you don't get that you get something totally different it's wicking it's trying to move the moisture it's trying to breathe it's trying to be organic because it's a organic compound. It is not something like petroleum, okay, that we have to drill and pull out of the ground and it's dangerous and toxic to anything that touches it. You have something that is natural. So let's talk about the cons. Now, when I talk about cons, I want you to understand that I am I am being hypercritical. Look at this shirt, really. Does it look like a well-worn shirt that I have washed and used multiple times? No. Does it look more new than old? Yes. Okay. I am being hypercritical when I do these cons. So look at me, look at my shirt, and when I'm saying it, look at it and say, am I seeing what he's saying? When I say something has changed, I'm talking about maybe that much, if not smaller. I'm being hypercritical. And the reason why I'm being so hypercritical is because I really couldn't find hardly any cons. The cons that were my biggest cons were stuff that I created. It is not on Fiabook. It is on me. So when I do these cons, I'll explain what, you know, where I messed up, why I messed up. I, some of this was, well, most of it was deliberate because I, I really wanted to run these shirts through the ringer. I wanted to put them through the test. So the first one is that you should know that when you buy shirts, and if you're, if you're a male, you're used to it, uh, unless you happen to have somebody buy for you, but just about all guys, they, they buy their own clothes unless you're married or something, and you know, your wife buys it for you. But your t-shirts are going to generally run a little bit smaller than your button-up shirts. So I always gravitate to button-up shirts because they run a little bit bigger. Now, if you like form-fitting clothes, then you know you want something like a t-shirt and you want a good form-fitting t-shirt and fia bulk if that's what you're looking for form-fitting they are true to size i'm not going to say that they're not true to size they are true to size they are form-fitting and if you like that maybe you're built you know and you you want to show off 
man, you talking about all those pecs and muscles that I don't have, and you want you know you want to show it out with all that stretch and everything, man, you could you could definitely look great in that shirt. Now I'm I'm a middle-aged old man, <laughs> so my my concerns are not looking the best in the world. I am not a health freak. I've never been a health freak. And until uh, I got diabetes and got on medication, I'd always been obese, morbidly obese. Uh, in fact, I'm probably less now in size than I have been since I graduated high school. So that kind of tells you I, I've kind of, thanks to well-regulated diabetes through my medicine, uh, I've been able to reduce the weight and get down to a, a size that I enjoy and that I feel healthier. Uh, but I still have this thing, I don't like feeling fabrics touching my skin. I just don't like it. I never have. And, and the bigger I got, the more conscious I got of the fact I didn't want people to see the pudge. And so I would always go one or two sizes bigger. So this is actually the size shirt I'm supposed to wear. I, this is an extra large. I normally wear a 2XL. I deliberately got a XL size, so I got my true size, what I'm supposed to be wearing, to actually see how Fiabunk would compare and test, because I know I wouldn't notice it as much if I did my standard 2XL or sometimes even 3XL sizes. You just don't notice it. And part of the other reason is when you start buying these clothes, once you get out of the XL category and you get into 2XL, 3XL, it's like all the other manufacturers think that you don't exist or that you should wear clown attire or that you should pay, you know, four times what you're supposed to pay because now you're you're just so odd to them. Fia boat, they go all the way up to 5XL. And they also go to small. So if you're a small frame person, they got you covered. Because I know that small frame people, y'all have problems like us big and tall dudes. It's just different different end of the spectrum, but you're dealing with the same thing. And so Fia boat has you covered. Now, me, I like to have my clothing feel a little bit looser. But in this test, I, I did my natural size and it actually feels pretty great. Uh, I, I think I'd feel more comfortable just because of the subconscious. It's part of my my habits now, but really as far as general wear, unless I'm actively thinking about it, I wouldn't I wouldn't think about the fact that I have on my true size. It's just a shirt. And that's the way you should always feel. It's just my shirt. And if anything, you should say, man, this feels comfortable. And that's what I do. I'm like, man, I feel cool. I feel comfortable. I feel free. It breathes. It moves. I love this. But like I said, if you want something that's not as form-fitting, you know, just be, keep in mind, they're true to size. So some, some of these cheap ones, they'll go a little extra big because Americans were fat and we liked it. You know, we like to overeat, we like to eat food that's not healthy, and we have all kinds of health conditions because of the way our market is, and it's hard to eat healthy, it's hard to do right, it's hard not to get these diseases. And so you have people that, you know, they say, okay, since Americans are big, we're going to make the sizes not true, make them a little bit bigger. And then, you know, you have some that they they go the other end because they're not from America and they go extra small on their sizes. Fear bulk, they are true to size and they stay true to size. So you need to understand that. Now, I will say that even with things that are true, you can take a product, let's say it's a crescent wrench made by a brand. It doesn't matter, you can be snap on, it can be whatever you know, craftsman, you name it. That wrench, even though it's standardized from from day to day, month to month, there's gonna be variations. There's gonna be changes in that. And so when you see product tests, they'll actually source the same model like a thousand times from a thousand different locations 
to test them. So it's not like one wrench, and this one wrench is going to represent all the wrenches. No, they have hundreds and thousands that they're using, and then they take uh, uh, all those numbers and figures, and they tally it up to get a general representation. So I had four shirts from Fiabook. Two long sleeve, two regular short sleeve, all right? So it's a small sampling size. And I just want you to keep that in mind for what I'm talking about here, because I have found that the the, the sage and the uh, the mint, they're, they're the greener colored, and for whatever reason, they seem to be a little bit smaller, more form-fitting than the, the others. So the Tuscany, the Dodger Blue, the Dodger Blue, it feels comfortable, it feels breathable. Tuscany, it's still same thing. It's just a long sleeve, so there's a different feel to it, but all in all, feels pretty good. The Sage feels good. In fact, I like the Sage probably better than I do any of them because I like the color, but it is a little smaller on me compared to the Dodger Blue one that I'm wearing today. The same thing, I prefer the mint when I'm out fishing because when you're out fishing you want something to be kind of light blue color when you're fishing because one the fish don't see that color as good and then also when ones that do see colors it's more like the sky and so they're less spooked so you that's the reason why you see a lot of sun shirts and the blues light blues you know, thing that nature, so that mint green kind of falls in line with that. And I really like that color for that reason, but it is a little smaller. Now I'm talking about just a little bit, but you got somebody that's hypersensitive anyway to cloth touching them because of body image issues and all that over my lifetime that I just have grown accustomed to having something bigger. And so for this test, I. I, at least on the green ones that I had, I wish I went two sizes up with them. Uh, the the on the dark sleeve uh, shirt or not dark the the mint green not dark green mint green it it actually shrank anywhere between a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So not only did it shrink you know, where the cuff was, but also shrank as it went around my arm at where the hemline was. And so I, I did notice that felt tighter after being washed. But again, you're only talking about just a little bit, but you got somebody that is hypersensitive to these issues. And so I felt it, therefore I didn't like it. Now, if you like Form, and there's people that they love form-fitting stuff, so this would be right up your alley. If you're built and you're wanting to show off, a little bit tighter is actually going to make it look even better. Uh, but I, and like I said, it was only a minuscule amount of change, but I did notice it because I'm hyper aware. Now they call for cold water washing only and they wanted a tumble dry. I, I assumed that they meant to be a low temp tumble dry. I did not do that. If you're gonna wash clothes, you're gonna wash clothes. And most people, they're not gonna sort out and say, oh, these can only be washed at this temperature, and these can only be done at this temperature, and this can only be done at that temperature. They're not gonna take the time. If you are, God bless you you'll have years of enjoyment out of this fabric. And you probably have years of enjoyment out of all your clothing because you do that. Most people though, I know they put good instructions on what you're supposed to do. I didn't do that. Still, I didn't notice anything off-putting at all. But I did do it. Now, what I did notice again, Look at my shirt. You see here, see how crisp that looks, how new that looks? I did notice just a small amount, a minuscule amount of puckering and shrinkage with the threads on the hemlines and everything of that nature. 
I mean, just a little, just a smudge. And really and truly, I would have never noticed it had I not been trying to do a video and running a product through its paces. So this is me just being hypercritical. So all these cons that I gave, really and truly, they're not cons at all, which is rare for me. I dog cuss products all the time in my reviews, but that's not the case with this. Now there's some some uh, comments and considerations I have for Facebook. Uh, that I think that they're going to be watching this video. They're going to be reading your comments. They're another one of these companies that I've been dealing with that have been above beyond uh, with how they handle stuff. And they, they have told me time and again to just do a fair review. And so I'm giving a fair review, and I, I mean, I've tried to be hypercritical, but it's been hard. Their product is that good. But uh, one of the things that I want to mention that we do have crazy humidity levels. So this, I don't think what you saw when I was testing it was fair to the shirt and to the brand. I did what I was told to do, make a fair, honest review. But in all honesty, I can't be truly honest unless I say this shirt is not made for the Gulf states. This shirt is made for everywhere else in the world where humidity levels are normal. The Gulf states, you know, lower Alabama, lower Georgia, Florida, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, the lower parts of Mississippi, South Carolina, we experience humidity that, in Florida, especially Florida and Texas, we experience humidity that is unbearable. Just to put it in terms that you can understand, think of a amount of water and what temperature it takes to evaporate that water, start the evaporation process off, a given amount. To put things in perspective, in Florida, you would need the temperature to be 15 to 20 degrees above that given temperature anywhere else in the world to evaporate that same amount of water. So you go to Kansas, you go to Nebraska, California, New York, that water would have been evaporating off a lot sooner. It has to get a lot hotter in Florida to get that to, to actually start the evaporation process so you're already hotter than you're supposed to be and that means that you can't regulate your body temperature right because you've got all this radiant heat that you're dealing with plus the ambient temperatures plus the humidity that's forcing and driving all this and so that means that like the other day I was I was going out to do some stuff. It was 96 degrees. We have a thing that, some depend on which weather service you use, they'll either say heat index or they'll say real feel. It is virtually the same thing. So you think 96 degrees Fahrenheit. What is 96 degrees Fahrenheit in a high humid environment? What does that feel like? If you were to walk out there, what would it be the equivalent of if I was, say, in Kansas, I was in California, I was in New York? It would be 106, or actually it's 109 degrees that day. 109 degrees Fahrenheit. So that kind of puts into perspective what it's like here and try and test that product here versus someplace else. So that's the reason why I said it's not fair. And you see that a lot with the Gulf Coast states. Uh, one thing's with Fearboat, I do a lot of outdoor stuff. I understand. I see this as being a line that they're trying to brand to younger guys, uh, guys that they're they're fit, that you know, all the even though that they do 5X, but 
I think that they're trying to get the average American male as their demographic. And I think that they, with the fabric combination that they have, with the bamboo and all that, that they could do an outdoor line. And I wish that they would do an outdoor line because they can make these sun shirts and all you need is for the sleeves to be about four to six inches longer have thumb holes in the cuff so that you know when you're reeling whatever and you're working that sleeve is not riding up on you add about two to three inches to your sleeve as it goes around the arm just at the hem just add at your hemline add about two to three inches extra fabric so that your sleeve is loose make make it where it's less form fitting so it, it's loose and then put a hood a big floppy hood that's lightweight that's a sun shirt more or less and all, you know you don't have to have it in 22 different colors uh, mint's good uh, dodger blue's good any of the blues, light blues, whites, the white, I, most people wouldn't wear white because you're going to get fish and all that on it. And then I would also do dark colors because you have people that they also like to hunt stuff like hogs. Okay, wild hogs are becoming invasive in the southern U.S. You go to Texas, you go to South Florida, they're taking over. And so when you're out hunting, you need to have everything, you know, covered up so that they don't see you. Well, having it in a sage, any type of the dark green colors, that's your, you know, I'm not saying go camo, I'm just saying some of your darker greens, that you could have some of those hoodie type sun shirts and they could double as hunting shirts. And even in, even in the winter time, what happens is in the winter time it goes from we, we have what we call wind chill and so the the moisture with the wind when it's cold actually makes it colder than what it feels and then when it's hot it makes it hotter than what it feels so it's a it's a double-edged sword so in the winter time when it's in the 20s or it's 30s or whatever we'll have real feels or, or wind chills that it might be 14 degrees you know, we, we 20, 20 degrees, 14 degrees, sometimes 30 degrees, whatever. If it's nice and cool, that, you know. So you have that in the wintertime, and then two weeks later, it heats up, and it's like in the, in the high 80s to low 90s. So we're back to 90 to 100 degree real fields. Well, if you're trying to hunt, you've got to have everything covered. That is miserable. And so having some type of sun shirt or something, I put on some gloves and have that on there and not be sweating to death. And I have to worry about all the sweat. You know, you got a deer that its nose is more sensitive than a dog. I don't have to worry with a shirt like this, a deer smelling, because it's absorbing. So you could definitely do a sporting line and eventually, based off sales, yeah, maybe go into camo, maybe go into design patterns meant to mimic the sky. Do all those fun things later on if the sales warrant it, but for right now, Fia Bulk, I really think you should do verge out a little bit and just make some minor changes and do a very light outdoors line that that would put you in competition into a new niche. I really think you should because this this would work fantastically and your prices are actually lower than what a lot of the competition is doing and the material the wear the usability the longevity everything about it is a hundred times better trust me uh, but like I said I would I would go a little bit bigger on the sleeves I feel just on the casual wear, I go just a little bit longer. Those green colors, I would try to figure out what's going on with them if, you know, just kind of check and see if anybody makes any complaints or says anything because I noticed it was with the green colors. 
and I had two green colored shirts and both of them happened. The only thing about them that was the same uh, that was different with the others is that there was a green tint to them. Uh, other than that, I really I can't say anything really bad about the brand. Now, in a previous review, I had said that I don't get anything when I do these coupon codes. And as I make this video, that is true. Now, just before I taped this segment, Fiobuck has made an offer to me to at least go through the process of trying to have a more permanent representative station with them as a brand ambassador. Uh, I could apply and be rejected. I understand that. But to even be invited to apply, that right there is a great honor, especially if you're a content creator, that you're now you're now at a different level. And so I appreciate the invitation. I am investigating that invitation because again, like with all these videos, we have contracts, we have all these things that we have to comply with, even though it's an honest review and they're not paying me and I'm not getting anything out of it, there are still things in the contract that I have to say or I have to do uh, w without compromising any type of honesty, integrity of the video. And that's the way I, I, make, I deliberately craft my honest videos, my honest review videos, so that all these things that they wish, they want some hashtags. Okay, I'll put some hashtags in. They want me to, you know, state their slogan. Okay, I stated their slogan. These are things that I think are reasonable. Because I say, okay, they say this. We're going to test it. We tested it. They were right. So I'm being fully transparent with you as my viewer. But they did reach out to, it, to me to apply. If they accept, then yes, unlike the other previous reviews I've done where I had a coupon code, I might get a commission. I might get something out of a sale. At the time that I'm recording this, this is not the case. I would get nothing. As far as I know, I would get nothing. Under YouTube standards, I still have to call this a sponsor review because I got the shirts. So they sent me these shirts and so I, I got something of value to review. And so that YouTube considers that payment. All right, now I'll leave it up to you whether or not you think that four shirts was payment for me to, to compromise my integrity by saying something I didn't believe. If you believe that I'm that kind of person, then please unsubscribe. That, you know, if you think the four shirts gonna be what I sell out for, please unsubscribe because I'm not that type of person. I really don't want somebody thinking that I'm that type of person watching me. But if you believe that four shirts is definitely not something that would compromise my integrity or your integrity, yeah, uh, subscribe. Realize that if you buy it at this point in time, unless something changes, that's why I'm saying if something changes, I'm not going to do any type of special video saying, okay, I'm now a brand ambassador, so what I said before, I'm canceling. I'm, I'm not, I don't do that. So I'm just saying that at a point in time later on, it might help me out, but right now as I do this, I'm being honest that it won't, but it may change. I don't know, I just want to be totally transparent. But with that, I, I'll say all in all that I've ran it through its paces. I've spent weeks working on this. And I've hassled my wife. She's played cameraman for me. I appreciate her help. They say that this is by far the best, most comfortable t-shirt I'd ever owned. They're right. I've tested it. I love it. The reason why I want to 
possibly work with them as brand ambassadors that the product, the people, everything about them, I love. They're great to work with. They have integrity. They, they know their stuff. I like that. Again, like I said in a previous review, I've, I gave it high praise. I'm giving this one high praise, which is so weird because I get the I get offer products. I want to just dog cuss them, and I can't. The this this last one, especially these shirts, I cannot dog cuss them. I can't say a bad thing about them. I tried to be critical. I tried to run them through the paces. It 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 survives. It thrives. It outshines. So I, I just love, and I, hopefully I will be working with them in the future. Hopefully, if I decide to be a brand ambassador and make the application, that they'll accept it and that you may see more of this stuff. You may hate seeing me mention this brand. Uh, if you hate seeing it, then you might want to try buying it because you might understand what I'm talking about. But with that being said, if you want the best, most comfortable t-shirt on the market, you need to use code KEN20 at the link down below at your checkout to get 20% off any Fiobalk shirts that you buy. So that is KEN20 to get 20% off. Now YouTube, they uh, they have a video down below here that they think that you might like. There is a video right up here that you might like, and a video up here that you might like. And the reason why I say that is because this video is over. Bye.